Uh, my name is Troy Klein. I am the Education and Public Outreach Lead for the Magnetospheric Multiscale Mission, which is a very long name right now, which we hope one day will shorten, make it a little bit more digestible for the public. But uh, that mission will launch in the year 2014. And it's a mission that will, it's a, it's a space weather type of mission or heliophysics type of mission mm -hmm. that will be launched into space. It will send four spacecraft zooming around the Earth for two years that will search out and look for magnetic reconnection events or explosions. And it produces a tremendous amount of energy. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we want, we want to learn more about that. So more about that satellite and satellites and launches that will be coming up, uh, we'll be sharing with you in the future. Great. But my other job that I do, which is something I'm very passionate about, is the Sun Earth Day program. And uh, every year, for the past 10, 11 years, Sun Earth Day has had a new theme, an educational theme, and we focus our energy on some general theme that the public can latch on to and use in classrooms and museums. We focused on eclipses, uh, ancient astronomy, uh, astronomical events around the world throughout history, where we plan to go in the future, the ideas of things to come. Uh, and many, many, many others. One was called Magnetic Storms, one of the themes, and that, that was a lot of fun. All of those websites are archived, and you can go back and visit the videos, see eclipses, see events around the world, ancient sites that are solar viewing sites around the world. Just a, just a great resource. But this year, for 2012, mm -hmm. which is why I'm here today, is to tell you about uh, an event that's coming up on June 5th of 2012, which is called the Transit of Venus. And we're very excited because where we have to go <laughs> to see this with the least chance of cloud cover mm -hmm. uh, with our telescopes is in on Mauna Kea, which is a, a volcano at the top of a volcano in Hawaii. Oh. And it just so happens that's one of the prime viewing locations around the world to be able to see it. Now, many people initially ask, you know, you're talking about the transit of Venus. Mm -hmm. What is a transit or what's the transit of Venus? Um, a transit of Venus is basically like a small eclipse, and many people have seen total solar eclipses around the world as they happen, and, and that's as our moon transits or passes between the Earth and the Sun and blocks out the Sun. Well, Venus is so far away, it's almost it's about the size of Earth, but it's so far away that on June 5th, it will transit between the Earth and the Sun, and we can actually see it. And it's a very important historic event. It happened uh, eight years ago, and then, you know, 100 and around 115, 117 years before that, then eight years before that, and it happens in this very weird cycle. Uh, it happened in 2004, and we were all there. I was on the beach in Rehoboth Beach, and uh, so I could watch it. So as the sun came up that day, the, transit, the uh, planet Venus was transiting, had just started moving across the sun, and I had solar viewing glasses to protect my eyes, and I, I looked from the beach, and there, there was a dot, and I was like, that's a planet. I'm actually seeing a planet with my, my own eyes. People had telescopes out with the right filters. They were watching webcasts uh, from around the world uh, to promote this and to see it. And we, we had no idea that the public would be this excited about what seemed like a really small transit. But uh, that weekend, we had 50 million people who hit our servers at NASA Goddard and crashed them. Oh, no. <laughs> we're ready this time. OK. Uh, and so, of course, NASA headquarters and people came to the rescue, and the site was back up, and everything was a success, and people could see, could see the entire event. So tell us a little bit about how people can see, besides your webcast, perhaps see themselves using protected mm -hmm. glasses, the transit, and what parts of the Earth can, can see it? Well, actually, um, all of North America will be able to see part of the transit. And the transit itself, it will take Venus about six and a half hours to transit across the sun. So we have a long time, you know, you don't have to be there to see the moment or mm -hmm. see the few minutes. Uh, some of the most significant parts of the transit as far as science goes is something called first, second, third, and fourth contact. And that's just a term, those are terms that are simply used to say when Venus first touches our perspective the, of the outer limb of the sun, and that's first contact. Then when Venus moves across just to the inside edge or inside limb of the sun on the left uh, or on that side, that's second contact. And then there's quite a bit of time and it transits. And then third contact is just when it touches the other side of the sun or the limb and then it crosses over. Uh, the last time it is near the sun at that point is called fourth contact. 
So we have a webcast uh, set up in Mon on a volcano in Mauna Kea, Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is one of the best locations in the world to be able to see it. And we chose the location because mm -hmm. we'll see the full transit. We'll be able to broadcast that out with the, the equipment and the team to everybody in the world, especially those people who are in South America that can't see mm -hmm. the transit. Because during on that day, on June 5th, as the transit's happening, mm -hmm. just so happens during that six and a half hours, their part of the planet, their side of the planet, will not be facing the sun mm -hmm. enough at all to be able to see it. But most of the other places on the planet will. So uh, if you want to see the transit from your location, there is no cloud cover, mm -hmm. uh, and you have solar viewing glasses or you have a filtered telescope, um, and you can also have the webcast up and be watching it live as it's happening just so you make sure you don't miss Amazing. anything. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you can set it up and, and, and view it yourself. Now, to find out what time, the transit will be happening in your area uh, in the east coast of the United States it's somewhere around 6, 6.30 and to get that exact time in the evening that you'll be able to watch it you can go to the website that we have which is venustransit.nasa.gov okay. and uh, there you'll see, a, you'll see buttons and signs and transits and maps. One of the maps that you'll be able to see is actually a tool that you can enter in your time zone or your location and what comes back is your viewing time to tell you when you should be out, when you can see it, and, and so forth. That's great. Yeah, we're excited. We have one last question. Okay. You briefly mentioned the science. Yes. So, um, from a scientist, uh, uh, an astronomer's perspective, um, what can we learn from a planetary transit? And you mentioned it's a historical event That's that right. only happens every hundred years with this kind of two times that you can see it. Mm -hmm. So when was it first seen by scientists and astronomers and how is that, you know, today compared I, to when it was first seen? Well, what I can tell you, one of the best ways to find the accurate information about this transit is we just completed a whole series of awesome videos about the transit. And I wrote some notes so I can tell you the names of those. Okay. And that will tell you the first time it was seen in historical views of it, when it was seen in Hawaii, and why Hawaii is such a culturally relevant and important part of the transit of Venus. Now there were significant things that happened in Hawaii that have actually become, or compare, I mean, connected to the transit of Venus uh, that helped us understand uh, how far away the Earth is from the Sun. And that's why the transit of Venus was so important. They actually, when they watched the transit of Venus for the first time you know, in history, mm -hmm. they had uh, people in certain parts of the Earth very far apart from each other. They synced their times, mm -hmm. and then they looked at the transit as it happened, as it was touching a particular part of the Sun at the same time, or not touching, but transiting at a particular mm -hmm. spot. And they recorded that moment. And then they used geometry and parallax activities and so forth to calculate the distance that we were from Venus and then how far we were from the Sun. And for the first time, they created something called the AU, or Astronomical Unit. And that is the distance between the Earth and the Sun. Now before that, we really had no idea that we were 93 million miles away from our Sun. We didn't know how really how big it was. We just knew relatively speaking, things were further and closer apart. But when that happened, it suddenly opened up the scale of our solar system and eventually our universe. And we still use uh, transits today. And, you, and uh, you can actually go online and check out the Kepler mission. Mm -hmm. And that's a mission that will use transits of planets around other stars in order to gain information about that planet and that star and all of that. So there's quite a bit of amazing information That's there that you wonderful. can find. Yeah. So you had a few sites you could... I do. When you go to the transit of, or venustransit.nasa.gov site, there are some places I really think you need to go. One is our YouTube channel, mm -hmm. which we have all the videos listed. Now the videos that you'll see there, uh, anybody can download and watch, are one of them is called Transit of Venus 1. gives you the history we're talking about just a little bit. Transit of Venus 2 tells you more about the scientific significance of the transit. And then it also talks about Hawaii and lots of the cultural relevant, relevance of, of that location for, for this transit. Now, we felt by going to a place like Hawaii and, and, and all of the amazing indigenous peoples that live in Hawaii, and we've worked with several indigenous societies and peoples and tribes around the world for other events, uh, we started talking with them a long time ago and asking them uh, how they would like for us to portray the culture, the people, the science, what the, what the past of the Hawaiian culture was, 
what's happening currently with Hawaiian people and what will be happening in the future. I mean, so it's not that when you talk about indigenous peoples, it, you don't just focus on the history. It's an amazing rich history, but indigenous peoples are here with us today, walking with us. And as a matter of fact, I had uh, part of my family background is Cherokee. The rest of me is clearly Irish. <laughs> but uh, it's a real dear, near and dear thing to my heart. And I, I really feel, and our te whole team feels it's important when you go to any location on this planet, uh, spe especially populated by indigenous populations, that you work with them um, and, and determine what's okay to share and how to share it and the best way to share it. The Hawaiian people have been wonderful. And so we have three additional videos that we've, we've created with them just for this event, and you can find those also on the website. One of them is called the Hawaiian Cosmos, so you'll learn about all of the uh, astronomy, uh, or a lot about the astronomy of Hawaiian culture. And you also find one called Polynesian Wayfinders. Uh, and it turns out that the Polynesians were among, if not the best, navigation or navigators on the ocean by using stars and using the night sky. They're phenomenal people, and there's a history there that's really rich in these videos. These videos are only around five, six minutes long, so they're short. You can use them in classrooms, download them from the website. And we just released one just this week that's called uh, Hawaiian Students Learn About the Transit. And you actually watch students in Hawaii just recently who are doing transit ac educational activities, and they show you how to do them. So if you want to do that in your classroom, just go watch what they're doing. It'll give you the ideas. Now the rest of the website talks about uh, things like promotional materials. You can do desktop wallpapers that are of the, you know, of the transit with a beautiful silhouette of a ship in Hawaii and an ocean. It's just beautiful and you can use them for your cell phone or droid or whatever it is, iPhones and iPads and all that good stuff. We also have many downloadable uh, flyers and bookmarks. There's a huge poster that you can also download. Teacher packets have been sent out uh, already for people who register on the Sun Earth Day website and the, the packets are filled with amazing mission related mission information. One of the missions that we're really focusing on uh, from NASA with this transit is the SDO mission or Solar Dynamics Observatory and that's because that satellite will be able to see the transit as it's happening and we're working with them now uh, how, how we can broadcast images out or share out images through social media, hopefully on the webcast, that will show Venus against the sun, but from a satellite point of view, while we're pointing at it with our telescopes and so forth from Earth. Wow. It's going to be awesome. And the last uh, few things I'd like to share that I think the students will really enjoy, we have a huge social media campaign uh, with Facebook and Twitter and Flickr and we have many images and a whole site set up that you can get to where you can upload images of your star parties and events to Flickr and then share them with people and we'll be monitoring that site a lot and sharing some of those images out this year. Um, we created a Google Earth event map and what people can do, a uh, Google map actually, mm -hmm. what people can do is go onto the Sun Earth Day website or the Venus Transit website, they'll see this beautiful map, you click on it and what you end up doing is submitting your event. So if you're having a, a transit of Venus related event before, during, and after the actual day of June 5th, you can enter information, a URL, a description of that event and submit it. And as soon as our, our person who's monitoring that site sees it, within, within no more than 24 hours, that event will appear on this beautiful map that anybody around the world can see. And, and what makes that really important is that people in your area who would like to come and be part of the event can find you that way. And we already ha we have, I think it's a couple hundred if not more events already submitted and that are on that map. And when you first come to that map, it may look just completely covered with dots and pins and all of the events, but all you have to do is zoom in mm -hmm. to your region and you'll be able to clear that up. And, and that's a good way map. to find other people or places Absolutely. to go where you can safely view it. That's right. And they will, many of those events, uh, will have safe solar viewing techniques. Many of them will be uh, hosted by amateur astronomer groups in local areas that do know, usually know the good rules of how to view the sun safely mm -hmm. and can help you. So it's a good thing. Schools, museums, planetariums around the world are submitting events right now. So Let's have the website one more time. It is venustransit.nasa.gov and we Thank welcome you. you and we look forward to seeing everyone. Thanks a lot. You're welcome.